Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be discussing reverse T3, and this is number seven in um, our thyroid beginner series. And so today I'm titling this "Reverse T3: The Thyroid Lab Test You Are Missing," and there's a reason that I that I titled it that, and we'll get into um, why that is and why it's a little bit uh, controversial and why uh, normal doctors aren't really ordering it. So let's talk about this, and I have this image here that we're going to be using in just a second. So bear with me here. So what is reverse T3? Reverse T3 is a simple lab test. Uh, it can be ordered by your physician. Um, it's just it's a standard test. You get it on any lab slip. If you if you have one of those lab slips that has like the check boxes on it that your doctor checks through, you'll see it right on there with the list of thyroid tests. So it's a it's a standard um, normal regular regular uh, lab test. Now the problem is most conventional doctors believe that this test is quote clinically useless. And so what that means is they feel that ordering this test tells you nothing about the status of your thyroid and it's not actionable. Well there's a big problem with that and so I'm, uh, that's why we have this image and that's why I'm going to explain it. And the problem the problem with that line of thinking is how can if you understand thyroid physiology um, and you understand what is happening in the body with your thyroid, it's hard to just say that anything that helps give you a better picture is completely useless. It's sort of a naive statement uh, to make, I think. And so let's talk about this. Now this might look a little bit confusing. Don't let it be confusing. I'm going to explain it really, I'm going to explain it in simple terms. So what we have here is we have um, a, a graph here which is describing the way that different thyroid lab tests change over time based on the severity of illness. So we can say if you are, if you are ill or having problems with, with um, th thyroid function or hypothyroidism or whatever it is and you think that you have thyroid issues, what do your lab tests look like if you have mild disease, moderate, and severe disease? So it's really helpful in determining which tests are actually helpful. Okay, and so that's what we're looking at. Now if you look at this blue box here, what this is saying is this is showing you the normal reference range. So if you look at any of these lab tests and you compare them and look at them over time from mild to severe, you see that the majority of thyroid lab tests don't even extend out of this normal box except for a couple and we'll talk about those. So what that means is when you look at lab thyroid lab tests and you're even in the the moderate to severe area, many of these lab tests will appear to be normal based solely on the reference range. And hopefully you're sort of getting the the picture here that I've been explaining in previous videos and that is the standard way that we look at thyroid lab tests and thyroid function is not the most accurate and the best way to do it. But it is the conventional way and that's why we're having this discussion. So look at this one down here. This one is total T3. Remember the last video I told you that total T3 is incredibly helpful because it starts becoming way outside of the reference range even in the very beginning. And then up here at the top you have reverse T3 which does the exact same. So if you ignore everything in the middle and you look just at these two you can see that as you get sicker and sicker and as your thyroid, thyroid disease or dysfunction um, worsens over time the spread between this top one and this bottom one it widens. See? So the best two ways to look at this would be checking reverse T3 and checking T3. And it's very simple because these other ones are going to be less helpful because they all fall within that reference range. So that's one of the clinical there's one of many ways that you can use reverse T3 to find value in assessing your thyroid function. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit more about how your body makes reverse T3. So we touched on this a little bit on the thyroid conversion uh, video or lesson that we that we had previously. And remember, thyroid conversion is how your body takes T4 and turns it into the active T3. That's how it normally works. And so I have this image to show you. Remember, thyroid creates uh, T4 and your body turns it into T3 and then it's active and everything's hunky-dory and you're, you, that T3 goes into your cells and does all the good things that you want. Well, what I didn't really expand on previously is that your body has a choice. It doesn't always have to choose T3. Sometimes it can choose to take your T4 and turn it into reverse T3, which is an inactive thyroid metabolite. All right, and so what that means is under certain circumstances, your body will take all the T4 that it has and it'll decide one way or the other. Do I want T3, which is good, or do we want reverse T3, which is bad? So the more that your body, and this is always happening, and you know, at a, at a different rate. So you might say this is happening 90% of the time and this is happening 10% of the time. So 90% is good and 10% is bad. But what if you have certain influences in your body that make this go 
to 20% and this to 80% or this to 30% and this to 70%. So you can see that your body has the choice to do this and certain factors influence the conversion to the good thing, which we want, which is T3, or the bad thing that we don't want, which is reverse T3. So in that way, we can look at your reverse T3 and we can determine what is the body doing with T4? And do we, is it doing the thing that we want it to do? That is, is it creating the T3? Or is it creating reverse T3? And that's where it's so useful. So you can just check it and you can look at T3 and you can look at reverse T3 and you can say, is my T3 high? Yes or no? Yes? Okay, that's good. Is my reverse T3 low or high? If it's high, that's bad. If it's low, that's good. So it's very simple. So in this way, we can look at TSH, we can look at T4, we can look at T3, and we can look at reverse T3. Why would you do anything different? If you just look at TSH, you're not getting the whole picture. But if you order all of these lab tests, it's just making the image more clear, right? There's really no reason to, to not look at all of the other factors that affect your thyroid function. It just doesn't make sense. So that's, that's in a nutshell what happens. So now we need to talk about what causes your body to choose the reverse T3 pathway because that's not what we want at all. And again, I already sort of touched on that in a previous uh, video about thyroid conversion, but we'll, I'll mention just some of the big ones here. So I think one of the biggest is dieting and calorie restriction. And I'm going to show you a, a lab test of somebody who, who did just that. I remember this patient. I remember what happened. So we'll get to that in just a second. But dieting causes your body to say, hey, we're going to slow down thyroid function in the body because our metabolism is damaged. Instead of making T3, we're going to make a ton of reverse T3. And it's just going to put the brakes on the thyroid system. So dieting, calorie restriction does that. We talked about inflammation doing that. We talked about nutrient deficiencies, especially zinc and selenium. So if you have optimal zinc and selenium, your body says, hey, let's make T3 because those are cofactors in that conversion process trauma, stress, lack of sleep, all of those other things that we talked about. If you have, you know, and they just kind of compound and add on top of each other. So the more you have, you know, let's say you're not sleeping well, you also are not eating very well, you're also just trying to, you know, do a 500 calorie diet or HCG diet, all, all three of those things or four of those things, they're going to tell your body, they're going to send the signal to say, hey, instead of making T3, let's make reverse T3. And that's obviously going to cause a problem in your body. It's going to reduce thyroid function. It's going to make you feel terrible. So let's just use a couple examples of how we test for it real quick. So this is what it looks like when you test for reverse T3. Now, I have it highlighted here in this, this orange box. Um, and don't let this name confuse you. So it's triiodothyronine.reverse. And remember, T3, the other name for T3 is triiodothyronine. That's just the sort of the scientific or um, the name that we use. So if you see triiodothyronine comma reverse, that is reverse T3. And then if you see something like triiodothyronine total, that's total T3. Or triiodothyronine free, that's free T3. So don't let these things confuse you. Now look at the look at what we have here, which is the reference range. So if we go back here, remember this blue line represents that reference range. And I told you reverse T3 is an early marker of, of thyroid issues because it becomes it goes outside of that box right here in the very beginning. That's exactly what we're seeing here. So 9 to 27 is the reference range, but look at this result. It's 41.1. This is a, a patient who I know just did the ACG diet, and so of course your level is going to be massively high because the body is saying, hey, you just damaged our metabolism. Let's respond by increasing reverse T3 incredibly high and slowing down the metabolism. So if we looked here, I don't have her, total, her T3 pulled up, but you would also see that that T3, I guarantee you, was down. I don't remember what it was at the top of my head, but I, I remember this was the pattern that this patient had. And this is the pattern that probably a lot of you have. And so what you want to do is you do not want this high because the higher this is, that means that reverse T3 is going to be competing for free T3 to bind on the cell. So the more reverse T3 you have, the harder it is for whatever little amount of thyroid function you have or T3 to get on the cell and to activate that cell, get inside the nucleus and do all the things that we want it to do. So reverse T3 bad. Uh, T3 good. Now what you want to aim for is a value that is less than 15. So if you look from 9 to 27, you want yours to be less than 15. If it's higher than that, that's an indication that perhaps your body isn't utilizing that conversion process appropriately. So it's probably taking more of that T4 and turning it directly into reverse T3 as opposed to in T3. So that's the value of ordering this test because then you can make decisions based off of that information. And that's what you do. You affect, uh, it changes how you look at treatment and management. So that's it. Trying to keep it short for you guys. This is reverse T3. Very, very, very important lab test to assess thyroid function. I'd say one of the most important tests that you can order. I order it almost every single time. I can't even imagine a scenario in which I wouldn't order it along with T3 because that gives you the most information. So that's it. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments and I'll do my best to get to them. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.